Are you looking for a library management system with a well-designed database? In this video, I will cover the process of creating a comprehensive database system for managing library resources. Watch as I design and implement a solution. Let's begin. In order to design the system, we first need to write down all the tasks that happen in a library. These tasks will act as tables in our database. So let's do that quickly. There are total nine tasks that are divided into these two categories, task related to books and task related to workflow. Out of these nine, five tasks will be related to books and four will be related to journal workflow. Let me show you task related to books first. Books management, book copies management, books checkouts, fine management, inventory, now, task related to journal workflow, library branches, library members, employees, and job roles. We will see what are all these tasks and what are their attributes in details when we will lay out the ER diagram for our library management system in the next step. Entity relationship diagram is very important while designing any database. This will speed up the process of database coding, which will be the next step. For drawing ERD, I will be using a free tool called Draw.io. It's completely free and doesn't even require a sign up. It's simple and straightforward. So let's jump into it and start drawing. Let's draw our first class, which is books. Now let's add its attribute. It has total seven attributes, book ID, title, author, ISBN, genre, publisher, and publication date. Among these seven, book ID is the primary key. Remaining are the general attributes related to a book. Now let's place this class right here and let's quickly draw the second class. Our next class is book copies. And for now, this table has four attributes. Among these four, copy ID is the primary key and book ID is the foreign key. The status attribute shows whether the book is available or checked out. And the due date attribute displays the date on which the book is due, if it's been borrowed. First, let's place it right here and add the relation between this table and the books table. This is going to be one to many relation. Great. Next table is checkout. This table holds five attributes. The checkout ID is the primary key. The copy ID links to the book copies table and helps us track which copy of a book has been borrowed. The other three attributes gives us the information on the dates, such as when the book was checked out, returned, and is due. Let's place this table right here and add the relation between this table and the book copies table and this is going to be one to one relation done next table is fine similar to checkout table this one also has five attributes the fine id is the primary key and copy id is foreign key the copy id tells us which book copy has the fine the other three attributes tell us the amount of the fine, the date it was imposed, and its current status. Let's put this table right here or maybe here and add the relation. It's looking good now. Now we have the inventory. This table gives us the information about the inventory of the book across all the branches. This table also has five attributes, just like the previous two. The inventory ID is the primary key. The book ID is linked to the books table as a foreign key. The remaining three attributes shows us the quantity of books, the date they were added, 
and the date they were last modified. Let's put it right here and add the relation. Great. Before adding the next class, let's put this book copies class right here so that it will look neat and clean. Okay. Our next class is going to be branches. Let's put it here. Great. This table is for holding down the information about the branches of the library. Again, there are five attributes. The branch ID is the primary key. Branch name, address, phone number, and email are the details related to the branches. Next is members. Let's put it right here a little bit. Okay, here. Members are the backbone of any library. This table keeps track of the library members. This table has seven attributes, starting with the member ID, which is the primary key. Then we got first name, last name, phone number, email, and address to keep personal record of the member. And finally, we have the membership expiration date. So we always know when they are up for renewal. And then we have employees table. I will put it right here. Great. This table is for keeping the records of all the employees working in the library across all the branches. This table has seven attributes. The employee ID is our primary key. Then we got the first name, last name, phone number, and email for holding personal details of the employees. Lastly, we track their hire date to know when they joined the team. Here is the final table, job role. Let's put it here. This table has three attributes. The job ID is the primary key. The role name tells us the title and the salary attribute gives us the pay. But first, if you have watched this video up to this point, then please give it a like as YouTube algorithms prefer video with higher interaction. Thanks. Now there are a few broken links between these tables. In order to make this library database management system robust and scalable, we have to fix these links. By fixing links, I mean adding foreign key relationship between these tables. Let's quickly do that. If you want to learn more about foreign key relationship, then I have done a video on that. You can find its link on your screen as well as in the description. Let's start with the employees table. It is clear that this table isn't connected with the job roles table. Ideally, it should be. Let's fix this link by adding a foreign key in the employees table, which will connect it with the job roles table. Next will be the inventory table. An inventory should always know which branch has which book copy. That is why we need to connect this table with our branches table. Let's quickly do that. Next, the find table. This table clearly has no relationship with the members table and it would be stupid if we keep it that way. So let's add a foreign key. Let's drag it a little bit here. This relationship will help us find the name of the member and total amount of fine imposed on that member. Next will be the checkout table. Since there is no link between checkout and members table, thus there is no way to find out which book was checked out by which member. To fix this, we need to add a foreign key in the checkout table which will link it to the members table. Done. Lastly, the book copies table. This table is not linked with the branches table. Thus, there is no way to find out which book copy is available in which branch. 
To fix this, we will again add a foreign key in it to link it with the book copies table. You can download the PDF of this ERD diagram. I will leave the link in the description. Now we have a design of a proper library management system database in front of us. Now we just have to use this design and code this database. Comment below if you want me to do a video showing how to code this database. But there is still a problem with this design and that is the way in which we are storing addresses in members and employees tables. I will take up this issue in the next video. I will show you the proper way to store addresses in database there. Meanwhile, key takeaways. Each of these tables have one primary key and all the non-key attributes depends completely on it. This satisfies the second normal form. All the columns contain atomic values. None of the columns is storing two values together. All of them are holding one value at most at all. This satisfies our first normal form. We removed all the columns which are dependent on the primary key. This eliminates any transitive dependencies. This satisfies the third normal form. If you like this video then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also press the bell icon. This was a database tutorial on how to design library management system. Thanks for watching. This is Manish from rebellionrider.com.